Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've got a crazy story sent to me by a whole bunch of people, after which there will be a paid commercial announcement, but that's the end of the video. This story is out of Missouri. St. Louis County town tows cars from driveways with expired tags, and it's actually crazier than that. So in other words, you got a car in your driveway, and the license plate expires. They'll come by and tow your car. And you got to pay a lot of money to get it back. But worse, if you had the car, say, in your backyard or theoretically in your garage, they would likewise say you're violating the law and they've got the right to tow that car. And the people in charge are, they're doubling down on this and they're saying they've got every right to do this. It's perfectly legal. <laughs> Mitch McCoy wrote this for Fox2Now.com out of St. Louis County. A mother of two is without her car after a Missouri City towed it away from her driveway because her temporary tags had expired. She lives in Calverton Park, located in St. Louis County, and feels like she's losing everything. I just don't know how they can come into my driveway and take my car, she said. Fox 2 uncovered an administrative search warrant signed by a judge on May 22nd that allowed the city to tow and impound her car because her tags had expired. She said she's been saving up to pay to get new tags, but hadn't saved up the money yet. She says, I've just been taking a little bit out of every paycheck and setting it aside. The taxes are close to two grand, she said. The Calverton Park Police and Code Enforcement Lieutenant said a warning was sent to her that gave her 10 days to either remove the vehicle or have a hearing with him before taking action. And by remove the vehicle, doesn't mean just get it off her property. Okay, get, get, get it out of town. This car better get out of town before sundown. That kind of thing. Now, that officer said it comes down to two things. It must be licensed and operable in order to be in the driveway or private property in Calverton Park. Calverton Park's ordinance prohibits property owners from having an unlicensed and or inoperable car on the property. And right now, and I know that you guys have figured this out, or the one or two who have not, if you've got a project car that you're working on and it's not completed, here it's in violation of the law and subject to impound. And so you might say, well, Steve, obviously you can just go get the car registered and plated and all that, right? Will they register and plate a car that's inoperable? Because it says also if it's not licensed, or if it's inoperable, it can be towed. So you yank the engine out of your car to work on it. Your car's inoperable, my friend. Uh, that's subject to impound. And I don't see anybody mentioning any exemptions here. So there is a problem. The city confirmed that since December of 2020, there's been a total of 350 violations noted, and they've towed away 81 vehicles as a result. If the vehicle is towed away, the city will also issue an abatement fee. And they don't say this in the article, but I need to tell you that if your vehicle gets towed away by a municipality and you don't pay the impound fees and the other fees associated therewith, they're more likely going to take your vehicle then and auction it off to sell it and raise the money to pay those bills. So there's a good chance that of the 81 vehicles they towed, some of them will never go back to the owners. That's just a fact of life. So an attorney that they consulted said Missouri law clearly states that a car can't be towed from private property unless it's a safety hazard or if the property owner requests it. He said trying to argue that an expired tag is a safety hazard is a stretch. He said they're really tap dancing around state law. While some could argue it's a gray area, I still think it's in violation of this individual's civil rights. He said that Calverton Park's ordinance can lead to a vicious cycle because it's similar to debtor's jail. You don't pay a fine because of a traffic violation or something, and they jail you for not paying the fine. And, of course, when they jail you, you incur more fines. So it becomes that thing. The code guy said unlicensed vehicles are safety hazards because they found snakes and mice when removing cars. And of course, as you know, snakes and mice will not climb into a licensed vehicle. They will only climb into an unlicensed vehicle. That's a pro tip for you, my friends. Uh, meanwhile, people say this is silly. 
But the uh, mayor of Calverton Park said he stands by the ordinance and his city attorney. And he says, how many attorneys have you ever met in your life? Do they all agree on anything? Of course not. So he's saying because attorneys disagree, you can just pick whichever one you like and go with them. But you do understand that when two attorneys are standing in court before a judge arguing opposite sides of a case, a judge does pick a winner. And by necessity, if there's a winner, then there's also a loser. And so you want to pick the case that would make you a winner. And just because your attorney disagrees with another attorney, you go, I've got the right to pick whichever attorney I want because they never agree on anything. Well, it's not whether the attorneys agree. It's whether the judge agrees with your attorney. Meanwhile, that same mayor says he wants to keep residents living in Calverton Park and make life livable, which he believes takes enforcing city codes. We want to change for the better, not for the worse. So one way to do that is to keep people here, not have them flee to St. Charles County. So he's saying that by towing the vehicles that are unregistered, they're keeping people from fleeing the county. (laughs) By taking their cars? (laughs) Or is that too easy? I'm sorry. It's up to courts to determine whether we stay on one side or the other. He said that's not up to us. But until then, we can interpret as we must and the city attorney's advice. So he's saying that they think they're doing the right thing. Meanwhile, the mother of two that they cited at the beginning of the article who said that her car was taken while she was saving up the money to replace the tags says she's been struggling ever since her vehicle was towed. So she said that she's got all kinds of issues. She's been out without her car now for a couple weeks. uh, And it looks like she owes the tow yard about $1,000 to get her vehicle back. I assume that's towing and storage because they tack those storage charges on daily. And then, of course, it's going to be $2,000 for her to get the tags and the taxes and all that stuff taken care of to get her vehicle registered. So now, by towing her vehicle, they dug her hole at least $1,000 deeper. And then, of course, there's a $336 abatement fee. Abatement fee. So actually, the towing of $1,000, the abatement fee of $336. So now, instead of just saving up two grand that she thought she had to save up, She's got to save up $3,336, and as she's saving that money up, the storage fees in her car are climbing. And storage fees, for some weird reason, are ridiculous. And so if you ever encounter somebody who's had their vehicle towed by a city and encounter storage fees, you discover that the clock starts running on that real fast, real soon. So I've known people who said, I... I, Went out, my car was gone, it got towed. I went straight to the impound yard. They said, it's this much to get it back, and that includes a storage fee. How long did you store the car? Well, it was here for a day. Well, no, it couldn't have been. You just had it for like an hour. Yeah, but it's a, it's days or fractions of days. So it was here for one day. So we get a day storage on top of the towing and so on. And the abatement fee, of course, goes to the city. The woman says, I don't have that amount of money to get my car out of the impound There's no way I live life paycheck to paycheck as it is. And so here's the thing. There are a lot of places that have ordinances regarding excess vehicles or vehicles that are parked that are not being used for whatever reason, whether they're not tagged or whether they're not drivable. And um, famously, there's a guy who wrote for Jalopnik. (laughs) He knows who he is, and so do most of us. David Tracy. And David Tracy uh, writes a lot for uh, various organizations, but right now he runs an organization called The Autopian that he started with Jason Torchinsky, formerly also of Jalopnik. And David would tell these stories about this car collection that he had going. (laughs) And occasionally there would be people who would come along and say, "Uh, your cars you have in the driveway need to be plated and insured and drivable and so on and so forth. But... I'm reasonably certain that where he was, if he tucked a car in the garage, he became okay. It was only when they were out in the driveway. And that particular city, I believe their intention was to keep it so people didn't leave junked cars in their driveway. So their thinking was if it's plated and insured and drivable, then it's probably a complete car. But they didn't care what went on behind the closed doors of your garage. And that's how it ought to be. But this statute that they're talking about, his ordinance, 
says that it must be licensed and operable in order to be in your driveway or private property in Calverton Park. So I actually know a guy. I, this is going to be it's not like a crazy story, but it's absolutely true. I know a guy who built a car piece by piece in his basement. In his basement. And when he was done, the car couldn't go up the stairs, so he took it back apart again, brought it outside, and reassembled it. So theoretically, that car in the man's basement is not operable for the bulk of the time it's there. It would be subject to impound. Why? Why? Oh, well, if we don't impound it, snakes and mice might move into it, and the owner or somebody might flee to the next county to get away from that unlicensed car filled with snakes and mice. But that's absurd. And so this is an example. And by the way, keep in mind that there is one nation, 50 states, and then in each state, counties and cities and townships and towns and villages. And so we live under a mosaic of laws. You've got to follow federal law, state law, and then municipal municipal code where you live, right? And so obviously, if you were to go across the entire country and do a survey of all the laws out there regarding unplated or inoperable cars in the yard, it's going to be the local ordinances that pop up, but you're going to see them all over the place. Some places won't address it. They won't have anything on the books about it. Some places are going to say, if the vehicle is inoperable and visible from the street, something like that. And they can get away with that because they can say an inoperable car that can be seen from the street might be an eyesore. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm simply saying that's a distinction that would make more sense to me than simply saying inoperable on your property. Because that means if you've got a pole barn out back and you restore cars in it, theoretically, if this municipality becomes aware of inoperable cars in your pole barn, they can come and tow them away. And then charge you a towing fee and an abatement fee. And I think most people are going to say, that's crazy. That's crazy. So the mayor here says, no, we have a good purpose here. These cars are are a hazard. And if you interpret what he said about people leaving the area, he's saying they're fighting blight. They're fighting the, they're making the place look better. They're fighting to keep it looking good. And that's an admirable idea. But if I've got the car in my basement or in my pole barn and no one can see it but me and I'm working on it and it will be operable when I'm done, if a law actually says it's subject to towing and abatement, then that law goes too far. And I agree with the attorney that they found who said that this is a violation of the individual's civil rights. And if push comes to shove, as in this goes to court, I suspect that's what's going to happen, is that this is going to get struck down as being too broad, overly broad. So yeah, does it catch the person who's got the car in their driveway, up on blocks with half the parts off of it, and it's covered with a tarp, every time it rains it rusts a little more, oh, it fell off one of the blocks, now it's kind of angled down like this, it looks like a sinking ship going down in the driveway. Um, Next door neighbors looking at that every single morning out their front window, and that person, I can see them complaining. I'm not saying I'm not saying that <laughs> I'm going to be the one who calls the police, but I'm just saying that that makes more sense to me than does, oh, I understand that you've got out back a 16-acre parcel in the middle of which is a pole barn, uh, and inside that pole barn is a, is a car that's being rebuilt but is not operable at the moment. Uh, we better come in and impound that car to protect you from snakes and mice. And you realize how stupid that is. So, by the way, that is a fair way to look at these things, uh, is to look to see what extent the law can be pushed to. I would suggest that the mayor of this town sit down with the city council and say, guys, it's been pointed out to us that the way our law is drafted, it might be overly broad. And if we go to court on this issue, there's a good chance we're going to lose And a judge is going to say, I understand the point of the law, but it's drawn too broad. you got to narrow that down. So instead of going to court and losing on things like that, why don't we just mm, tweak that law a little bit and solve the problem? But as of right now, it's a crazy story. 
And that is the St. Louis County town that tows cars from driveways with expired tags, but also they say they've got the right to tow them from private property simply if the car is inoperable. It can be tagged, but it's inoperable. It can be towed. Mitch McCoy wrote that for Fox2Now.com, and a whole bunch of people sent it to me. Thank you very much. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. I mentioned at the front end, I was going to do a quick paid endorsement at the end of this video, and that's what I'm doing right now. I mentioned a while back, Factor, and I've done an ad for them before. And back then, I said, I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, I was approached by them, and they said, would you be interested in uh, promoting our products? And I said, well, I've heard of you, but I will only promote something that I've experienced, tried, and enjoyed, and I will not put my name on something that I cannot endorse. So I tried it, I enjoyed it, and I said, yep, I'll do it. So they contacted me again and said, Steve, you want to do another one? I said, sure, sure, absolutely. So in case you don't know, Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. They got a team of gourmet chefs. They create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. So what happens is, and while I'm talking, I'm going to run video just to show you how simple this is. You go on the website, they walk you through the ordering process. You order this, and by the way, stick around and you get half off your first order. And so you order the stuff and it shows up on your porch and they tell you what day it's gonna get there. And FedEx drops it off and there it is, boom. You bring the box inside, you open the box up. Box opens up, inside it's packed really, really nice and it's got some cold stuff in there to keep the food cold. And you open it up and boom, there are your meals. The meals are prepared in such a way that they are, number one, very, very good. And number two, simple to prepare. Two minutes in a microwave. Two minutes, not three, not four, two. All you got to do is slide it out of the package, poke a couple holes in the plastic, stick it in the microwave, hit two minutes. And by the way, while we're talking, I'm going to show you a video of how easy that is. <laughs> Two minutes later, pop it up, peel off the plastic, let it cool down a little bit, and eat it. And see, here's the problem. I am actually a relatively busy guy. You know that I write books, I shoot videos, I practice law, believe it or not, and I also have hobbies. Uh, I mountain bike, I run, a few other things I do to occupy my time. And so I've discovered that with me, uh, food preparation has slid way down the list of priorities in my life. So that I never go to the store and go, you know, I'm going to start preparing myself some complicated meals this week as a treat for myself. No! <laughs> I go to the grocery store, grab two or three things and get the heck out of there because I don't like spending time in the grocery store. And as a result, I wind up making the exact same meals over and over and over again. <laughs> Sad but true. And it's simply because I haven't got time. So a lot of people, after I did the first ad for these people. A lot of people contact me and say, Steve, I, I, I heard you talk about this. I tried it because I'm like you. I've got so much stuff happening, you know? And so, I, you know, it, it, the number of times I find myself eating fast food, and I hate to admit that, but it's true. I, you haven't got time. That's why they call it fast food. So if you're too busy, especially in the summertime, uh, to cook and prepare the meals, uh, I'll tell you right now, the meals they send are the kind that you'd make yourself if you had the time and the ingredients and knew how to do this. By the way, I don't know how to make chipotle rubbed pork chop, but I had it this week. It was wonderful. I'm sitting at my desk eating this going, oh my gosh, <laughs> last week, I don't want to tell you what I was eating, <laughs> but it was not chipotle rubbed pork chop with roasted cabbage and red bell pepper fondue. It, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> That's what I had. The next day, Garlic and herb roasted mushrooms. Again, I don't make this stuff for myself. This is the kind of stuff I expect to get at either a restaurant or if I go to somebody's house and they're trying to impress me. But I'm talking about what you eat at your desk at lunch or what you eat at home when you are just get home and you're busy and tired. What are you going to make yourself to eat? And you go, well, I could make myself one of these complicated meals, but who's got that kind of time? Well, guess what? Two minutes <laughs> instead of chopping, prepping, cleaning up. And by the way, the food is good. And I told people, if you take my advice 
and sign up for Factor and get the discount. I want you to tell me about your experience. And the feedback I got was overwhelmingly positive. In fact, the only negative feedback I got was from somebody who was in a country they couldn't order it. So, Steve, I can't order it. I'm sorry. But I had people say, Steve, I, I'm just like you. I'm too busy. I ordered it and it turns out it's, it's, it's a great break. Think about this. You're working real hard and you're going to break really quickly for lunch. A lot of places don't give you very long for lunch, by the way. But if you have a microwave in a fridge, bring this in the morning, throw it in the fridge, microwave. Two minutes later, you're eating a great meal. Better than the meals that you're cubicle mates are eaten that <laughs> they brought in a Tupperware and tried to reheat from the night before. So this will elevate your meals at home or at work. So, you know, they've got things like surf and turf, uh, roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp, <laughs> Cajun spiced shrimp and salmon, and all of this stuff, all of this stuff, they, they have, like I said, they've got a team of gourmet chefs working on this stuff. And these meals are designed to be cooked in the two minutes uh, and to be eaten thereafter. And the stuff is great. And so it's amazing what they've done. It's utterly amazing what they've done. So all you need to do is go to the website and click on the link. It's in the description below the video. And it's factor75.com. But click the link in the video below, in the description. And if you use the code LATOESLAW50, <laughs> LATOESLAW50, you'll get half off, half off, okay? So I know people are gonna say, well, Steve, I don't know, something like that's gonna be too expensive for me. No, try it, it's half off. <laughs> Can't beat that. So what you're gonna do is go to the website, factor75.com, and they'll walk you through the process, it's simple. But you'll see everything they've got there. And so the first thing to do is choose your preference. What, what kind of meal are you looking for? Okay. So they've got Chef's Choice. They've got Protein Plus, if you're on one of those kinds of kicks. Keto. They've actually got a keto section. You can order nothing but keto meals. Uh, calorie Smart Meals. You want to watch your calories. Calorie Smart. And Vegan and Veggie, if you're into that as well. So take your pick. Choose your preferences. And then you get to go in. And this is pretty cool. You get to go in... And actually, if you want to, say, I want this meal, but not this one. This one, but not this one. And pick them. Pick them. But I'll tell you right now, I've actually gotten their meals on several occasions. And I've just said, send me an assortment. Send me the assortment. And, and again, I've said before, if I'm going to put my name on it and come on here and talk to you guys and say, hey, you know, I endorse this product. I think you should try it. Uh, I have to believe in the product. And I have to have tried the product. So I actually thought, if I go in and I pick and choose the products, I might be cherry picking. So I said, just send me random ones. Send them randomly. And I've done that more than once. And every single time, every single meal was great and worth it. And I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. And so this, it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like they knew I existed and said, what's Steve Lato's biggest issue right now in his life? Well, he's too busy to cook. And quite frankly, we know him. He, he ain't going to put a lot of work into cooking. And so someone else has got to step up and <laughs> do the work for him. <laughs> order, the, order the components of the meal, prepare it, put it together, ship it to him, and let him cook it in two minutes. He can handle the two minutes. He can handle the two minutes in the microwave. That's, <laughs> that's what he's capable <laughs> of handling. So again... What you want to do, like I said, visit the website. Visit the website. You don't have to commit to anything by just visiting the website. Go to the website. Take a look at it. Look at the meals. And understand, by the way, the meals look great on the website. They look just as good on your, on your kitchen counter. So it's not like they've you know done any smoke and mirror stuff there. These meals come out looking amazing like that, and they taste amazing. So again, head to factor75.com. Or click the link below. But use the code LATOESLAW50. LATOESLAW50. And be sure you spell that right. <laughs> L-E-H-T-O-S-L-A-W-5-0. Yes, it looks like LATOESLAW50. And I had several people say, Steve, you should talk to Factor. I'm putting together some kind of special slaw. I'd call it LATOESLAW. 
<laughs> Leto Slaw. I, I don't know if they're uh, willing to do that just yet, but who knows if enough people enjoy this, maybe they will. So again, I urge you to check this out, especially if you're like me, you're too busy and you find yourself eating bland meals day after day because prioritizing meals is not what you're into. And like I said, I, I eat, but when I look at all the things I can do in a day, Preparing the meals was always something that fell by the wayside. So here's someone else will do the meal prep for you, and they'll take care of a whole week's worth of meals for you. So check it out, factor75.com. Use the discount code to get half off, half off. And the discount code is Latos Law or Latos Law 50. <laughs> there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Latos Law. Victory is having done your best. If you've done your best, you've won.